With the release of the fourth installment of the Matrix trilogy, what better way to celebrate than to recreate the text effect that was used in the movies with geometry notes? Enter the bootleg Matrix. Text effect. Oh, hey. This is the effect we will be making, and we will create it in four steps. Step 1 is to create a collection of characters. Step 2 is to create a grid with randomly selected characters. Step 3 is to create the character changing effect. And finally, step 4 is to create the falling lines effect. So for the characters, create a new collection and call it characters. Add a text object. Press tab to go into edit mode. And type in whatever characters you want to use. Then press tab again to exit edit mode. In the text properties tab is where we can greatly affect what the final result will look like, by using a different font. The font I will be using is called Electroharmonics, and you can download it from the link in the description. The font has a lot of other cool fonts, so it's worth to look around for one you like. Just make sure that you abide by any license restrictions for your font of choice. When you're happy with the text object, right click and select convert to mesh. Then, in edit mode, select everything and press P. Then select values parts to turn the characters into separate objects. Go back to object mode, and with everything selected, right click and go to set origin, and select origin to center of mass, surface. Finally, with everything still selected, press Alt G to position all the characters at the origin of the scene. One thing to note here is that the size difference of your characters will affect how uniform the text lines will look in the end which is why I'm using these specific characters. Here you can also adjust any outliers, by selecting an object and changing its position in edit mode. With step 1 done, let's move on to step 2, instancing random characters on a grid. Add a plane, and add a new Yomdr nodes tree to it in the Yomdr nodes workspace. Add a grid, and set all the values to 25. Then add an instance on points node. Drag the characters collection into the yum Drops tree. And enable separate children. Connect the collection info node to the instance socket of the instance on points node. And then enable pick instance. Finally, to randomize the characters, add a random value node and connect it to the instance index socket of the instance on points node. Adjust the max value of the random value node until you get the look that you like. I find that 360 gives a good look, but I encourage you to experiment with other values as well. So moving on to step 3, we will use an empty to drive the rate of change. Add an empty object to the scene, then drag it into the yum nodes tree. Add a position node, and a vector math node set to distance. Connect the location of the object info node and the position node into the distance node. Then connect that node to the seed socket of the random value node. In the scene, with the empty object selected, press N to open the property sidebar. In the item tab, we will add drivers to the X and Y location of the empty object. Drivers in Blender are a pretty big topic on its own, but for simplicity's sake, you can think of them as simple code blocks that can be used to alter values dynamically. The driver we will be using is one of the simplest ones, where we use the current frame in the timeline to set the position of the object. So in the x value, type hashtag frame divided by 100. This takes the current frame and divides the value by 100. So for frame 1, the value will be 0 0.01, for frame 2, which will be 0 0.02, and so on. We will do the same for the y value, but instead of dividing by 100, we will divide by 75. finally multiply the value by negative 1, to make the y value decrease each frame. If we press play on the timeline, we now get randomly changing characters, as well as on crisscrossing lines of character changes. With step 3 done, let's move on to the final step, where we create the falling lines effect. Before we add any nodes, 
we first need to set up a connection in the group input to make it easier to work with. So connect all the input sockets, except the vertices X socket, of the grid node to the same socket in the group input. And in the property sidebar, change the name of the socket to size. Then connect the vertices X socket to a separate socket of the group input. This way we can dynamically change the size and spread of the grid out here in the modifiers tab. And we also need these values for the following lines. Add an index node, a math node set to modulo, and a compare floats node set to greater than. Connect the index node to the top value of the modular node, then connect the modular node to the top socket of the greater than node. Next, add a math node set to add, a math node set to multiply, another math node set to add, and finally a random value node. Connect the random value node to the bottom socket of the first add node. Then connect that node to the top socket of the multiply node. Connect the multiply node to the second add node. And then connect that node to the bottom socket of the greater than node. Set the bottom value of the multiply node to negative 1. Set the min value of the random value node to negative 5. And the max value to 0. Then connect the greater than node to the selection socket of the instance on points node. Connect the size socket of the group input to the bottom socket of the modular node, as well as to the second add node. Finally, connect the top socket of the first add node to a new socket in the group input, then rename the socket to reveal. If we look at the modifiers tab, we now have three values in the geometry nodes modifier that we can control. The size value determines how big the grid is, so set it to something like 100. The vertices x value determines how many columns will be used in the effect. The reveal value determines how many rows of the grid that we can see, and since we have access to the value here in the modifiers tab, we can easily add a driver to it. So in the reveal value, type hashtag frame divided by 10 to add a driver. The speed of the reveal will be determined by the value that we divide the frame number with. So if you want it to be faster or slower, you can adjust the value here. Now that we have the Yamers nodes set up, let's build the final effect. Set the vertices x value to 80. Then select the object and duplicate it with Shift D. Adjust the reveal value to be divided by 5 instead of 10. And change the vertices x value to 5. Duplicate the object again, and change the reveal value divider to 15, and the vertices x value to 68. Finally, duplicate it one more time, and change the reveal divider to 7, and the vertices x value to 8. These are just the values I found that I liked, but I encourage you to try out different combinations. One final thing to make the effect look better is to add a glowing material to it. In the Materials tab, create a new material and name it Glow. Set the base color and the mission color to a bright green. And set the mission strength to 2.5. In the Render Properties tab, make sure that you're using Eevee and enable Bloom. Finally, to add a material to the characters, add a set material node before the group output. And in the drop down, select the glow material. If you want a black background, go to the world properties and set the strength to zero. And that's it. I hope you found this video useful and that you learned some new techniques for working with geometry nodes. See you next time.